Would you have ever considered that there is a link between the mitzvah to remember what Amalek did to us and to remember Shabbos? Both are consistent mitzvahs. They would seem to have absolutely no connection. Turns out they are intrinsically interlinked. Now we're going to learn about the mitzvah to remember Amalek at the end of our parasha. That's what starts this conversation. The end of the seder when the psukim tell us, Remember what Amalek did to you as you were leaving Mitzrayim. Never forget. So the, in the Medrash, the Sifri, the Gemara Megillah tells us, that what this means is, Azochar is When it tells us remember, that means we have to verbalize what, uh, what Amalek did. And the fact that we should never forget Amalek, that is something internal, that we n- never allow ourselves to lose sight of what Amalek did. Now, you're going to see that same kind of expression elsewhere. A different Medrash, Torah's Kanim, tells us, by Zochar, that you should remember Shabbos consistently and sanctify it. So you'd think, you would think that the, to fulfill this mitzvah, all you've got to do is have this consciousness inside of yourself that you know that Shabbos is coming. So it says, the Medrash when it tells us that you have to guard Shabbos, that's telling you that you have to have an internal memory and awareness of Shabbos at all times. What is the Torah adding by telling us, remember Shabbos? That you should actually mention Shabbos verbally on a regular basis. So it's really strange we should compare the two of them. The fact that we make a similarity between Shabbos, remembering Shabbos, remembering Amalek, is not only because of the two components, to remember in your mind and to verbalize that, mem- that memory, but it also applies to when you have the requirement to fulfill these mitzvahs to make these memories. The Rambam tells us about remembering Amolek, that we are required to always remember his bad or their bad actions against us, the fact that they ambushed us, so that we always keep the, our hatred of Amolek dynamic inside of ourselves. Like the Pasuk tells us, remember what Amalek did to you. And then he also adds, what we've just learned, that there's a requirement to verbalize our memory of, of Amalek and also to keep it internal as well. But the point is that uh, the Rambam is telling us, Amalek is a ständige mitzvah. It is a constant mitzvah that you have to fulfill at all times. Now there are other opinions, the Ramban and others, who, who argue as mitzvah zechira samolek is chiyuva ein mol that you can actually fulfill this mitzvah by remembering amolek once in your life, or the ein mol hayor vechayotzibaze, or once a year, like we do Pasha zocher. Let's even go with the opinion that says in order to fulfill the mitzvah, you only have to do it once a year or once in a lifetime. They'd also agree that if you constantly remember Amalek, every time that you remember Amalek would still be an additional fulfillment of a mitzvah in the Torah. So the mitzvah to remember Amalek is constant. Guess what? The same thing applies to the mitzvah of remembering Shabbos. Yes, the primary time you're supposed to remember Shabbos is on Shabbos. And that's why you make Kiddush in the beginning, and you daven, etc. Yet the Ramban, whose interpretation of Torah is based on the, uh, of the approach of Pshat, he tells us, as the Apostle that when the Torah tells us, remember Shabbos in order to make it holy, it is a constant mitzvah that every single day we are supposed to remember Shabbos and thereby keep it holy. Now, if we've got these two mitzvahs that are both constant, that's actually going to produce a question, a question that is quoted in the Medrash Tanchuma. Look what the Tanchuma tells us about the mitzvah to remember Amalek, and we'll better understand the question that the Medrash Tanchuma raises, which is, when it comes to Amalek, we're told, remember Amalek. And of course, the implication is, always. And when it comes to Shabbos, it also tells us the same word with the same instruction. Remember Shabbos, always. Are they both really supposed to be the same? 
And then it goes to a whole length of the explanation, that Shlomo Melech gives the explanation that there's different ways in which you remember things. And obviously the one is a positive and the other is a negative remembrance. And you're going to see almost the exact same kind of message in Pirkei de Rabbi Elozer. Pirkat Rabbi Lozer tells us that when Moshe Rabbeinu told the Jewish people, remember what Amalek did to you when you left Mitzrayim. Amru lo Yisrael, they didn't protest it and they said, Moshe Rabbeinu, here you've just given us a Pasuk that says remember what Amalek did. And you have another Pasuk which tells us that you have to remember Shabbos in order to sanctify it. Similar question to the Medrash Tan Chuma. How do you fulfill both of them? This is a constant thing that you have to remember and that is a constant thing that you have to remember. So what's the nature of the question both in the Medrash Tan Chuma and in Pirkei Drabi Yelazer? is because we're going to see that there is a very strong similarity between the obligation to remember Amalek and to remember Shabbos. Firstly, in both cases, it's not good enough just to have a memory of what Shabbos is all about or what Amalek did to us. You actually have to verbalize that memory. And Beis Dishira Tomid. It's something you have to do constantly. That implies that name Shovin, that the obligation of remembering Shabbos and of remembering Amalek are identical obligations. On the Rebbe men, which is why the Yidden asked, Hey, Achis Kaim Yishneim, how do we do both? Verbal does the Deir Azoi Zan and Zebeda Mitzvah Tmidias. If there are two constant mitzvahs, you cannot do two constant mitzvahs simultaneously, especially if they're very different mitzvahs. So probably that's what the Medrash is, is asking. If I always have to remember Shabbos and I always have to remember Amalek, that's a clash. How is that possible? We'd think that's the Medrash question. Turns out that can't be the explanation. That's not the way to explain it. These are not the only two things that we're required to, mention, to, to remember on a daily basis. And if they are not the only two, why don't we find the question raised about other things? Let's use the most common, which is that we every day have to remember the Yitzias Mitzrayim. Is moving. As I feel the of the Mer Zechiro is Zayin Mitzvah Tmidios. In other words, it's pretty clear that even if you have a number of things that you're supposed to remember, even if they're all constant, Zayin and Zayin can steer in it to the Tzveta. They do not automatically contradict each other. Valas is Doar Ortef Beda of the Mer Zechiro is because the human mind and the human being is capable of remembering more than one thing at a time. So that can't really be what's bothering the Medrash. How do you expect us to remember two things simultaneously? Okay, the fact that you're supposed to verbalize that, mem that memory, obviously you can only verbalize one thing at a time. So that's simple. Nobody suggests that you're supposed to talk about Amalek or even talk about Shabbos all day, every day. Even the fact that you're supposed to have a consciousness, a constant consciousness of Shabbos or of Amalek. Even if you want to say that at all times that's got to be something you're aware of in your heart. Even so, that doesn't automatically negate the possibility of being conscious of something else. V'horai, and the best example to illustrate this is, we famously know, Sefer HaChinach tells us there are six mitzvahs, as chiyuvon, timidi, loy, yuposek, me'al ho'odam, afil rega b'chol yomov. Six mitzvahs that are constant and you are never permitted to forget about them or to lose attention on them at all times. Indicating that it is possible for a person to focus on multiple memories or focus, focal points at the same time. So what's really bothering the Medrash and the Pirkei de Rabbi Elazar? Now, while we're about it, we haven't yet looked at how the Pirkei Darab suggests Moshe answered their question. We saw the Medrash tells us that the answer was, Shlema Melech says, there are different kinds of memories. But Pirkei Darab we haven't yet looked at what exactly the response of Moshe Rabbeinu was. Let's have a look at it now because it will also raise questions. So Moshe says to the Yidden, You cannot compare a cup filled with Chardonnay wine to a cup that is filled with vinegar. They're both cups, but they're completely different. 
So Zohar Lishmore Le Kadesh is Yem Ashabas, Shenem Zohar is Yem Ashabas Le Kadjoy. One memory, yes, it's the same function called memory, but one memory is to sanctify and bring holiness to remember Shabbos. And yet, when you remember Amalek, it's a completely different kind of memory that you're supposed to remember, that we are supposed to dismantle or destroy Amalek completely. That's what the Pritka Darbilaza says. The Rebbe has four questions on it. Number one, Aleph. How is it that the question, the question we're having, how do you remember two opposite or contradictory concepts simultaneously? How is it answered by saying, well, he has a cup of wine and he has a cup of vinegar? How does that answer the question? Why is it that he chose to use the example of a cup of good wine and a cup of vinegar? How does that help us to answer the question? Also, why does he say this is also a cup and that is also a cup? After you've told me that that's a cup of wine and that's a cup of vinegar, why emphasize this is a cup and that is a cup? How does that add insight to understanding the distinction between how you remember Shabbos and how you remember Amalek? And lastly, what is the Moshe Rabbeinu's answer that is so unique? Oh, Shabbos, you're remembering to sanctify, and Amalek, you're remembering to punish. Es doch mal feirisch. In die Zivuim milchat chila, as the tachlis von schirus Amalek is behefech von zochus yem Shabbos. I don't need the pirkei der Rabbi Elazar to tell us what um, Moshe Rabbeinu responded in order to know what the Torah already told me clearly that the remembering of Shabbos is something highly positive and associated with holiness, and the memory of Amalek is something which is associated with negative and with destruction. So in order for us to understand this, we've got to first analyze that there are different kinds of mitzvahs. And they correspond to the three main faculties of how we engage with the world, thought, speech, and action. Debir Bozeh. In mitzvahs b'chalal zayin in dodrai sugim, there are generally speaking three categories of mitzvahs. Mitzvah shebamaiseh, the vast majority of mitzvahs which are performed through action. Mitzvah shebedibor, like learning Torah, where you fulfill the mitzvah only when you use your words. Or mitzvah shebamachshava, and mitzvahs that are specific to the mind. Und die Schleimers in Kima Mitzvahs is, now the ultimate way to fulfill a mitzvah is, as ich mitzvah schöbe meisse, sondern sei mit kavonus mach shavas ha'odom, that even when I'm performing a mitzvah, which is an action mitzvah, the ideal state is, I do it with intention and with focus. In other words, my mind is also involved in the meaning behind this action. Only idoch, ich mitzvah schöbe dibur, uwe mach shavas on pills, I have to mention, but bis in meisse befeuel. And even a mitzvah, which is a thought mitzvah, let's say, for example, a belief in Hashem, the ultimate state of that mitzvah is when it impacts how the person actually behaves. There's the example of faith. The objective of faith in Hashem is not to have an abstract faith, but rather a faith that translates into the fulfillment of mitzvahs. Like the Gemara Makas tells us, that Chavaku came and he established the whole basis of all mitzvahs as a single mitzvah, that faith is what causes a person to live as a tzaddik, in other words, to fulfill all of the other mitzvahs. So zwischen auch die Mitzvahs, die Bedeber und Machshava Gufa, when we look at those Mitzvahs which are unique, because they belong in the category which is either in the mind or in speech, seinen Eis getelt, the Mitzvahs, was in Yonim, is, is the Koran. There's a unique category within mindful Mitzvahs, the Mitzvahs that are specific to memory. Was auch viele, wenn der Zikoran darf sein Bedeber, ist aber teuchen wird auch Lusse Machshava wie Kavona Saadam. If it's a memory Mitzvah, even if that requires verbalizing, like for example, we've said, Zohar, you've got to speak about Shabbos, you've got to make Kiddush, you've got to daven. Zohar is Amalek, you've got to speak about Amalek and what he did. Yet, because it's a memory Mitzvah, the core of the Mitzvah is very much about the intention and the focus. You don't really fulfill the mitzvah by saying whatever has to be said and then have a fleeting thought. The subject that you're supposed to discuss. Okay, I said it. I discussed it. Let's move on. If I'm supposed to remember something, the implication is that it's something which is, it's a concept, it's a topic which is supposed to completely obsess me or completely Grab my attention. When you remember something properly, you re-experience it. So you re-experience the threat of Amalek or the holiness of Shabbos. 
And we saw that clearly in the Rambam's language when he described how you fulfill the mitzvah of remembering Amalek. Where he says clearly that the objective of remembering Amalek is to invoke within ourselves the kind of conversation that will inspire us to wage war against and destroy Amalek as the Torah requires. Okay, so now we understand that a memory mitzvah is unique. A memory mitzvah is not just a matter of how much time it takes and is there enough time for another mitzvah. It's how much of myself does it require? How much do I have to be invested in the mitzvah? Therefore, I have the question, how can you have two memory mitzvahs that pull in opposite directions? And that's the question. How is it possible to remember? Which means something that invokes the whole depth of my being that awakens my soul. How could I have the same experience simultaneously because they are both constant mitzvahs in two completely opposite directions. Vishabas unamolek. Either I'm completely aroused with enthusiasm of the holiness of Shabbos or completely aroused with the anger at Amalek. Which one is it? The six mitzvahs that the Sefer Achinuch tells us we have to fulfill constantly, they're all in the same range. Belief in Hashem, love of Hashem, awe of Hashem, is by Zeshayach as the current midivos is Zekel Tzazamen. You could actually be completely invested in all of these mitzvahs and they all, they all work in tandem. They all add value to each other. Because they're all mitzvahs on the same theme, which is How do I connect to Hashem? I connect to Hashem through faith. I connect to Hashem through love. I connect to Hashem through awe. So they all complement each other. That there's no issue. You could do a whole series of mitzvahs on a single theme with complete personal investment at the same time. Whereas Shabbos and Amalek their core message and theme is completely different to each other. In fact, they're absolute opposites. The whole point of remembering Shabbos is that by remembering Shabbos, we remember the act of creation because that's how Shabbos happened. Becholes, we then re recognize that re creation is an ongoing process. And therefore, we'll be constantly aware of the fact that the Ebeshter runs the world, that the Ebeshter created and directs the world. We will constantly remember the recreation of the world at every moment as it was in the beginning of creation. In other words, so says, The objective of remembering Shabbos is a constant reminder that Hashem originally created the world. And not only that, <coughs> that Hashem recreates the world at every single moment. So therefore, remembering Shabbos is going to instill within us clear consciousness of the fact that the Ebeshter is absolutely in charge of everything, the world and whatever lives within it. It will solidify our faith in the most powerful way. And our Molech is all about the opposite. Amalek was signing in his doch bloshin ha yodua. Amalek, as we well know, the expression to describe Amalek is yodea esri boinoi, that he knows the master, he knows Hashem, and nevertheless, a miskaven limroid boy intentionally rebels against Hashem. Das heißt, in other words, niplois was a face vegan demetsis funelikos. It's not just that Amalek knows in general terms that there is a God. No nochmer a face as the Ebeshte is ri boinoi a balabais oif em. Amalek knows that the Ebeshter is in charge of him. He knows that. He acknowledges it. And not only that, Ebeshter Welt and Ebeshter is in control of the whole world. And he doesn't care. And that's why he's a mechav and limroid boy. Amalek is so toxic that he chooses to reject Hashem knowing that Hashem is in control. In other words, sein ganze kavvonu und piulo is semeret seine leikus. The entire purpose of Amalek, his whole existence, is focused on rebellion against Hashem to shelo sein die Schlitter von Eibeschen to undermine Eibeschen's Balabatischkeit. 
Der ist das Control. Und wenn man Pshas, das darf bei Ihnen sein, diese Chira von Amalek. So now, if I as a Jewish person have to remember Amalek and what he stands for, Hagamas and Mechuven in them is the Shailas and Yeminen von Amalek. Of course, I want to remember Amalek so that I can reject Amalek's attitude. Und wie das ist Kipschutte, as the Tachas von Zoch is Asher Osa is Timche Zecher Amalek. As the Pasch says clearly, why should you remember Amalek? So that you can eradicate Amalek. Nevertheless, aber es muss sich hören in sich kommen, als ob die Tere ist da mit Zies von Amerida bei Hashem. Like it or not, remembering Amalek means I remember that there is the possibility of rejection of God in our world. Was das macht auf die Mitzies von Mitzies Timche, which is the only reason there would be a mitzvah to eradicate such a body or such a persona or such a nation. So that's remembering something, the exact opposite of Shabbos. Why do I remember Shabbos? To remember that there's Enoid Malvado, Abish is absolutely in control. Why do I remember Amalek? To remember that there are those who reject that principle. And that's the complaint, the Medrash and the Pirkei Tarbi Lezer both quote, How do you fulfill both? This is one kind of memory and that's another kind of memory. Seeing as in order to fulfill the mitzvah, I have to be authentic in my experience of remembering and reliving and experiencing what the particular memory is all about. How can I live in two completely opposite realities? On the one hand, I've got to remember Shabbos, which is all about the whole essence of what a Jewish person is all about. From the guns are felt with the consciousness that the Ebeshte is in charge, absolutely, of everything, without exception. And at the same time, that I truly resonate with the principle that the Ebeshti is all that counts, the only true existence, at the same time I have to be absolutely resonant with the fact that there are those who reject it. Was ist mehrt in der Schlitter von dem Ebeshti in Welt? How can we accommodate both? How can we live in a reality einoid melvadoi except for Amalek who thinks otherwise? So Moshe Rabbeinu's response to them, as the Rebbe explains it, is revolutionary. Moshe Rabbeinu's response is not to say, yes, that's true. It's to say, let's understand who Amalek really is. And then you'll see there's no contradiction here. What does he tell them? Don't compare this glass of Chardonnay to the glass of vinegar. Both of them are caps. One is to remember and sanctify, and the other is to remember and punish. Why did he say vinegar? Because the irony of vinegar is that it is a paradoxical material. On the one hand, you cannot drink vinegar. It's poison, essentially, for the, for the body. And yet, the Gemara Yuma tells us the pungent odor, the power of vinegar is that it can actually revive a person. So you can't drink it because that's dangerous, but it can revive you when you're in danger. And in many areas, including halacha, we very often see that vinegar is not classed in its own category, but rather is considered under the subcategory of wine. That means it always retains a link to wine, which is very positive. And that's got a deep message for us in Primus Union in Mentes. Eich amolek choymetz, yes amolek is vinegar, poison. But hot asherish big dusha. He's linked to wine. He comes from a holy place originally. In other words, the possibility of an entity, a being, a nation, or an individual who intends to reject Hashem, despite the fact that the absolute truth is there is nothing besides Hashem. How is that possible? That's because of how great the Ebeshter is. The fact that Ebeshta is completely capable of anything, even capable of creating beings that believe themselves to be independent of and in, in conflict with Hashem. So Amalek 
originates from a very profound dimension of godliness where kol yochel, anything is possible, even the possibility of rejection. When you look at Amalek, you don't see that. You see toxic, you see bad, you see enemy. When you eradicate Amalek's enemy status, when you quell Amalek's rebellion against Hashem, only then do you reveal the truth, which is that Amalek comes from this deep, profound ability of Hashem to accommodate any reality. As for Demot Nizgalas and Sheirish Primi, when you wipe out Amalek in his combatant mode, that's when you reveal the depth of Amalek. You come to recognize that even something whose stated objective is to fight Hashem, to rebel against Hashem, is actually not in contrast to Hashem. That is a symbol of Hashem's greatness, of Hashem's infinite ability to even create such a, an entity. For Yom Tegzeh, and you can understand this a little better, of a Hesem Sum Klal, similar to what the Gemara tells us, anything that the Torah forbade, the Gemara Chulin famously tells us that there's an alternative in the kosher world that at least is similar to it. So because everything in negative has its so to speak, counterpart in positive, in Kedusha you also find this. You find that possibility in a holy space of rebellion against Hashem. How so? The Gemara speaks about how there are debates in the Heavenly Academy. In, in those debates, the Ebesha says one thing, and there's another opinion of those who belong to the Heavenly Academy. In other words, they rebel. They, so to speak, contradict Hashem, showing you that even in the world of holiness, there is the ability for some kind of quote unquote pushback against Hashem. That's what Moshe is telling them. You can't compare the cup of the Chardonnay to the cup of the, the vinegar, because even though they're both cups. Why is it important for us to know that they're both cups? The fact that a Jewish person can simultaneously be invested in the remembrance of Shabbos and everything it represents about Hashem's supreme control of everything. And at the same time, remember Amalek who rejects that? The reason is because the perspective I have to have is that both of them are vessels, vehicles for the Ebrish's manifestation in this world. Just like a cup is designed in order to be filled with something drinkable. So these elements, Shabbos and Amalek, are designed to be filled with some way of portraying and, and sharing Godliness in the world. Because even Amalek, who does not appear to be a vessel for godliness, in fact is. But at the same time, Moshe Rabbeinu tells, tells us that they may be cups, but they're not similar cups. One is a cup, the vessel for bringing more holiness into the world. And the other one is to remember what has to be removed and destroyed. That says the Gilei Elikus Baschir Shabbos is boy beatzmi. Now, this Moshe Rabbeinu's message is both Shabbos and Amalek are there to reveal Godliness in the world. Shabbos by and in and of itself. Zochel Yishmor El Kadosh says Yom Hashabbos. The Zochel Gufo Tutof Tikdusha. Remembering Shabbos already manifests the holiness, the Godliness in the world. The Gilei for Nachtas Hashem. The fact that the Eibushte is all. But the Gilei Elikus to Baschir Shabbos Amalek vetuf kiton dafke durch Zochel Oynesh. To achieve the same result, more awareness of Hashem, revelation of Godliness in the world, through Amalek, is only through the negative. You've got to so-called punish, attack, destroy Amalek. You've got to break down his natural tendency to want to rebel against Hashem. And in doing so, that will reveal how Amalek is also a manifestation of Godliness. And that will reveal how and that will help us to illustrate that the cup of vinegar, vinegar is not all bad. It has the capacity to revive somebody who is, who is weak, who is tired, or in our case, to revive godliness, a sense of godliness in our world. Because the objective of remembering Amalek is to illustrate and to highlight and to reveal that Amalek is about 
bringing godliness into the world in a certain sense, in a more profound way even than Shabbos, because it's an unexpected revelation of godliness, which shows how much Hashem is revealed in our world or how much Hashem is capable of being beyond rules and expectations and, and the finite. And thus, Musa and Matim Tsumbir from the Matan Rebbe in Tanya, and this is based on and very much aligned with what Al Rebbe teaches us in Tanya. As a Zain and Doshnemin and Achas Ruach, that there are two kinds of Nachas you can produce for Hashem. As Evi and Matamim Gashem, Zain and Fran Shnemin and Madonim, and the Al Rebbe compares the two kinds of Nachas to two kinds of delicacies. Eina from Macholim Arevim Ume Tukim. One type of delicacy is those things which are already sweet and therefore they are pleasurable. And the alternative is the great delicacy of something which is either sharp or like vinegar, tart, pickled. There too, the Altar uses this expression that when you cure the, the, the pickled or the vinegary elements properly, they actually add vitality, they revive a person. And that's like the Pasuk tells us, called Paul Hashem Lemaneu, everything that David made is for his purpose. Vegam Rosha Loyim Ros, as Al Trepa explains also there in Tanya, that even the Rosha is intended for Hashem's purpose. She Yashuv Meirishoi, when the Rosha does Chuba, but Yasa Rosha Loyim Veoy Lemaila, and thereby transforms the negative that he had created and generated through his behavior into something which is bright and illuminating and positive. There the Alter is telling us why is there Russia? Why is there behavior of a Russia? Why is there wickedness in the world? Only in order to transform it into something powerful, light and an illustration and manifestation of godliness like Amalek. Remember Amalek to destroy the extroverted or the external elements of Amalek's badness and discover instead the deep, profound godliness that Amalek represents. That teaches us a message, a lesson that has two extremes to it. When a Jewish person is at an elevated spiritual state, in the person is in the spiritual state equivalent of experiencing Shabbos, totally holy, totally dedicated to Hashem, You'll say, oh, I'm good. I'm in a holy place. I don't have to worry about my spiritual standing. I'm completely wrapped up in holiness and I keep my distance from the mundanities of this world. To that person, we have a lesson which says, you know what? Even when you're at the level of Shabbos, remember Amalek. Remember that nobody is absolutely immune. Because when you consider that Amalek is plugged into a very deep, profound, holy state. Therefore, even a person who is themselves very elevated, has to be absolutely on God. That Amalek doesn't somehow wend its way into his life. Yes, of course you're not going to turn into a rebel against Hashem like Amalek was, but it can happen in the most subtle way, like the person standing in front of the king and kind of winks or, or, or raises an eyebrow at his friend, and that's considered a complete rejection and rebellion against the king. In the same way, a person has to know, I could be at the level of Shabbos, I have to be conscious that I don't lose sight of absolute dedication to Hashem and instead get even subtly invested in myself. On the Idach, the message also goes to the other extreme. Even if you've got a Jew who feels that they are so spiritually unhealthy that they've fallen even into the world of Amalek, he should not give up hope and has to remember that because Amalek also has a spiritual holy source, you can turn a moleg into a cup, a vessel of godliness, like vinegar that has the power to rejuvenate. And the person should realize that I could produce that great excitement, that great achievement of turning darkness into light. And and therefore the message to this person who feels so spiritually disempowered is not only can you remember Amalek, which means be empowered to destroy Amalek, 
not to summon the mitah yichzochel yishmer lish kadosh asiyam shabbos, but you even have access to remember the holiness of Shabbos by the darga from kadosh l'Hashem to remember and 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 have some degree of access to this level of absolute holiness. Not only can I get there, but every one of us as a Jewish person is empowered to bring extra holiness to Shabbos. Merve Shabbos is Mikdash Shavakaima, more than the fact that Hashem has already invested holiness within Shabbos, and no person therefore should ever feel defeated or ever feel that they are incapable. You always have the ability to rise and to transform and to achieve absolute holy, holiness and greatness.